What's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody I'm very excited to speak with. At the time of this recording, she is still only the sixth or seventh youngest athlete in the UFC female rankings. In my opinion, one of the best, you know, female talents coming up in in the UFC right now. At the time of her debut, she had broken the record alongside Kay Hansen for the youngest combined age in UFC history for two people fighting at the age of 42 both of them 21 when they made their debut and she's one of the most promising female talents I think even just most promising talents inside the entirety of the UFC today I'm joined by none other than the pride of Wales and the pride of Sacramento very very soon Corey Poppins McKenna how are we doing today Corey? Hi I'm good thanks Tabby thanks for having me on there Absolutely, Corey. And, you know, first and foremost, I got to address, you know, the elephant in the room. Corey, where were you in 2023? I think every fan from Wales was asking that question, you know, just where's Poppins? Where's Corey? We got we got to see a f her fight in 2023. Talk to me about how you're feeling now that finally, you know, coming off a year you didn't fight. You have a fight announced against Jacqueline Amarim, you know, on March 16th at UFC Fight Night. Yeah, I had a really rough year in 2023. Um... I had a lot of health complications. I had three back-to-back -back viral infections, you know, COVID, uh, all the long COVID stuff that everyone, you know, was talking about and everything. I got hit with all of that back-to-back. I -back. Um, actually had RSP on fight week for the last fight. So I w I've been messed up. I was messed up, sorry. I'm, I'm great now. Uh, I was messed up for quite a few months. Uh, you know, so then I had to like really just really focus on my health and my wellness for 2023, uh, which sucks. I wanted to get back in there towards the back end of the end of the year, but you know, it just didn't line up that way. But luckily, I've been healthy for quite some time now. I've just been training really hard, waiting to get that call up, and they finally offered me something in March. So it's not as, uh, you know, it's not as soon as we, we wanted, but you know, I'll, I'll be more than prepared and way healthier. So going into it, so it's, it's all good with me. No, yeah, definitely. And obviously, it's great to hear that you're doing well now coming off a lot of those health issues. But you know, more importantly, I feel like even despite all the fighting, you know, uh, complications, you've been staying busy in terms of just doing everything. I feel like we've been seeing Corey McKenna even outside the octagon with the commentating. I think that's one of the big things that stood out to me about you is, you know, how much you've excelled in this commentating role as of late. And also just, you know, staying busy, you know, being around the gym, Team Alpha Male, one of the best gyms in the world. And you know, just really improving as a fighter and also just expanding your trade beyond just the fighting being able to excel in other avenues of the fight game talk to me about staying busy in that regard you know taking up commentating what's that been like just being able to stay busy amidst all these frustrations i'd imagine yeah like i say 2023 wasn't the best year health wise um but i really tried to use that time to improve in other aspects you know studying tape as you say i picked up the commentary which allows me to you know, be analytical, gives me another reason to watch fights. Um, it just kind of keeps me keeps me in, involved in the sport too, you know, especially like say like we're we're in an industry where outside out of mind kind of thing. So I've just spent a whole year not fighting just on the shelf. So at least it kept me kind of out, able to be out there with the MMA community and kind of just be involved. So that was really that was great. And then I also spent the year, you know, doing some like doing some certifications, getting qualified as a coach. Uh, I started teaching the kids class again at Ultimate Fitness, Team Alpha Male. Um, so just kind of like staying involved in in that MMA community, keeping my mind sharp. And like you say, I've been, I've been healthy for like the whole latter part of that year. So, um, you know, I'm 100, 110%. I'm way better than I was the last fight already. We've made some huge, huge gains. Like, yeah, I'm at the best team in the world. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited for this fight and I, I've been like say preparing in multiple different ways um and staying ready for that whole 2023 just uh had to get over health hiccups no yeah definitely and you mentioned obviously team alpha male I think it's one of the best gyms that's had a resurgence as of late you know you talk about the golden era of team alpha male you're talking guys like you know TJ Dillashaw before the whole controversy Cody Garbrandt you know Uriah Faber the list goes on and on, even Andre Philly at that time. And now we're seeing a resurgence of young Team Alpha Male fighters, yourself, Macy Barber, you've got, you know, Song Yedong. The list goes on and on of these young studs that are coming out of Team Alpha Male. What's it been like training there? And I know you and Macy specifically have grown a really tight bond as not only training partners, but friends. What's that dynamic been like with her fighting up at Flyweight and you fighting at Strawweight? What's that relationship been like since coming to Sacramento and settling into the new gym? 
Yeah, it's it's great. I say uh, the team's constantly growing. Um, you know, we had Yan was actually announced. Sorry, my dog's being like he finally he wants attention now. My attention somewhere else. Um, yeah, so Yan was announced yesterday. Uh, you know, she's fighting for the title, so that's great. Obviously, she's in my weight class, but she's she's years ahead of where I am. Like we're never gonna fight, so it's great for me to have someone like that to push myself against, uh, test myself against that level, and then like say so we have Macy, the weight class up probably close to close to being in the running for that too so I am um, I'm very fortunate you know day in day out I have these girls to test myself against to to train with um and it you know it's, if I keep up with them I can I can fight anybody you know it gives me that confidence going in there on fight night that you know I've I've already been in there with the best you know we work really hard day in day out on the team we're we're pushing each other we're investing each other you know I am um, Special shout out to like obviously uh, I train with this girl uh, Tina Black. She's from Brazil. She's in my weight class. She's not in the UFC yet. She had a contender series shot. Um, didn't I, I don't think she quite did herself justice on it to be honest. She's one of the she's one of the hardest girls I've ever trained with. Uh, she was the Invicta champion. Um, she she's like I'm working with her every single day, and she's probably the toughest girl I've like ever ever gone with inside and outside of the cage. So. Yeah, I just like between her and then Macy and Yan, like I've got nonstop top level looks from these girls. And it just gives me that confidence when I go in there on fight night that I've already seen everything that someone can throw at me. Sure, it's miserable some days. Uh, like you say, I'm I'm in there with the, you know, with these top girls that are, like you say, we're both we're both trying to push each other. But, yeah, it, it's just we're just helping each other prepare. And it's it's great. No, yeah, absolutely. I love that, you know, and you talk about the differences that we see from you training. Um, I mean, both trainings, I think, were great, but I feel like we really see, uh, you know, uh, Corey Poppins, McKenna 2.0. Since the fight against Elise Reed, I feel like obviously that one didn't go your way, but since then, you've looked new and improved. I feel like you would agree with that sentiment in terms of just making the adjustments necessary and really excelling, I think. And still, you know, I bring up your age as a factor only because of how much poise you have in the octagon i feel like uh, you know women's mixed martial artists and female mixed martial artists in the ufc do not get that credit that they deserve in terms of being so well-rounded so early on in their careers as opposed to some of the guys who fight you know they're very rough raw prospects you know talk to me a little bit about that being able to improve since coming to team alpha male and also just you know the improvements you've seen in your game maybe since the time away you know you talk about studying film and and watching tape maybe what are some big differences you see from you know, Corey McKenna, when she made her UFC debut to now, maybe after the last fight in 2022 against Ryan Velismas. Yeah, I've actually talked on this a lot and I feel like 2023 is a testament to this. Um, my health has really had to take a priority. This sport is brutal and most people don't realize, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I had some very significant injuries going into that Elise Reed fight and it kind of, so it's like, I didn't really have to change anything in terms of my training. If anything, I had to scale it back and take some time to realize that I actually just need to go in there and be the best version of me possible, you know, and that's, and that's as healthy as possible. That's like, I'm always prepared. I always, if anything, I do too much work, which is a detriment, you know? So this last, yeah, probably two years, it's been really about prioritizing health, um, you know, like kind of put putting my health first essentially that's 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 literally it like i'm i'm always on the mat um if anything i train less now than i did for my ufc debut but that's just because i'm you know i'm not running myself into the ground um and i feel like 2023 was kind of my reset year was trying to get healthy get back and it really shifted my focus like, like my priorities a little bit um because they always they always told me they're like you're gonna you're gonna go so hard and then eventually your body's gonna stop you and i feel like uh yeah the 2023 kind of checked me a little bit and it's given me that time that I needed to be like okay like if I'm gonna do this I need to do it sensibly so uh smarter not harder has definitely been the approach for the last two fights or however many it's been um we we talk about it all the time and you know nothing's perfect every time we're trying to get better um still probably gonna have bumps in the road and stuff to work on with this camp but yeah health health is priority you know you only get one brain um I've had some uh, I've had plenty of injuries in this sport I'm not even gonna like be around the bush like I've had plenty of injuries um 
and I've fought when I shouldn't have fought and I've had to learn the hard way that you know there's only so much our bodies are capable of doing um so if anything yeah it's kind of just like say I, I'm young but I've had to I've had to grow up real fast and realize that sometimes sometimes it's not a weakness to pump the brakes and know when to slow down a little bit no, yeah, I love that. And, you know, you talk about just being able to learn and adapt to the situation. I feel like you, in terms of just people around you and the community you've built for yourself, you've got two amazing communities, not just up in Sacramento, but also uh, back home in Wales. You know, you talk about Welsh mixed martial arts right now. I feel like it's kind of getting back to what it was, you know, in the heats of COVID. We saw a lot of Welsh fighters during COVID and then some of them, you know, obviously didn't pan out. Some of them are coming back. But I feel like 2024 is really kicking the gates wide open you know you are fighting jackie amaram you've got reese mckee fighting chidi and joe kuwani and then you've got oban elliott well coming off a phenomenal dana white contender series you know debut or dana white contender series showing he's making his debut against val woodburn talk to me a little bit about what it's been like to see your fellow countrymen just being able to really take back that narrative you know wales i feel like has kind of gone under the radar a little bit in the uk as of late but really it's coming back and making that you know we're, we're still here we still produce great talent and we're seeing that time and day. You know, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on that, and also just seeing, you know, a fellow countryman like, you know, Open Open Elliot, what he's been able to do, you know, since you know the performance that he put on in the Contender Series. Yeah, I'm 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 really happy for Oban. Um, you know, like I worked really hard. He trains at Slayer Combat, where um, what I was training when I was back there. Um, we actually, I think we fought a few times on the same cage where his card, but obviously I was always at the events and stuff too. So like. You know, I've I've definitely seen him a lot come in. Both where both of us were like, you know, grafted and coming up through the scenes. So it, it's great to see that hard work pay off for honestly for anybody. Like I'm like Welsh, not Welsh aside. Like I'm I'm happy for everybody that you know they succeed. Like this is a big thing. Not many people get to say that um, you know, that they made it to the UFC. Like that's that's the goal that everybody is chasing. So of course I'm really happy for for Oban and for everybody that's that's getting in the UFC and getting those opportunities. Um, so yeah, I I messaged him. I said I said well done. Like he's phenomenal performance, like way overdue. Um, so it's really cool. And then like you say, we got we got plenty of Welsh talent. You know, there's so many people coming up, and look, we've had so many great fighters in the UFC. Um, you know, even as a smaller country, like I feel like everyone who everyone who makes it, that they, they're always a standout. So it's it's really cool to be able to claim myself as part of that group. No, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you're doing a great job just in terms of not only representing Wales, but representing, you know, a greater picture of just young talent. You know, I feel like as of late, we've seen so much young talent. We talk about youth. I feel like that. I feel like, you know, like you mentioned, pumping the brakes a little bit. But needless to say, the skill, I think, is of younger fighters is only going higher and higher. You know, the the threshold and kind of starting point has become so kind of improved and refined now that we're seeing younger talent come through and really be able to hold their own against some veterans of the fight game you know you look at strawweight right now you're the third youngest in the division and the division is wide open i feel like it's one of those divisions where you know in terms of young talent or prospects coming up there's very few and far between as opposed to a division like flyweight talk to me about your thoughts on the division right now and you know just seeing your insertion back into it in 2024 with the excitement that you have for some of the possible matchups that could be coming your way yeah um honestly like the division the division stacked i had a lot of people asking me all last year they're like oh who do you think you're gonna fight like who do you want to fight and i'm like there's so much talent in this division and as you mentioned like the level is constantly going up um even outside of the ufc you know i, I had a conversation with someone the other day and like their amateurs are training like pros these days you know that like we've got teenage kids in the gym like training four or five times a day like like it's their job so it's like the level of this sport is going up every single day. Um, and I feel like the straw weight division is only getting better. It's getting tougher. Like the the competitions, you know, it's like I feel like everybody's up to that standard now. You know, there was like a little gap where the women's MMA was a bit behind and stuff like that. And I, I really feel like that's been closed over the last year or so. Um, but the divisions, the divisions stacked. There's so much talent. So I'm just excited to be back in the mix. Um you know, I don't know what's, I, I'm just taking it one fight at a time. So, you know, Jacqueline Amorim's like the only thing I'm focused on for now, but I don't know what the future holds after that. And that also excites me. You know, there's so many girls out there that are just training really hard and we've all got the same goal and 
yeah, it's, it's exciting. No, yeah, definitely. And like you mentioned, not looking too far into the future. You know, Jackie Amarim is the opponent in in front of you right now. March 16th, that's the date. Talk to me a little bit, not just look, not looking past Jackie, but, you know, in terms of activity, you know, really looking get to get back to that, you know, that former level of activity. Like you mentioned, two, three fights a year, maybe potentially, you know, talk to me about some of the goals you have in 2024, not just as a fighter, but, you know, in the commentary world or in other avenues of mixed martial arts. You mentioned some certifications you were looking to get and trying to obtain. You've obtained some. I imagine you're working on others as well. What does the year look like for Corey McKenna? What are some hopes and, and goals and ambitions you have in this new year as we kick it off, you know, maybe only 10, 12 days in right now? Yeah, so for 2024, uh, I'm right now I'm just focused on Jacqueline Amorim. Obviously, that's the task at hand. Um, obviously, I'd like to say that I won three, four fights this year, but naturally the last couple of years have thrown some... Uh, some things my way so i'm learning to just take short-term goals focus on focus on what i can control um so right now that's this fight what's next after that we'll we'll address that once this fight's out you know I, i'm single track mind right now but obviously i would like multiple fights this year i'd love to stay healthy um you know i'm i'm always even if i'm injured i'm in the gym training around what i training around what i'm dealing with uh so i'm always you know, like I'm always, I'm always trying to be ready for a fight. So I'd like to say that I'll be able to fight multiple times this year. But right now, right now, Jacqueline Amorim's all that I'm focused on. Absolutely, and I feel like as a fan, you know, speaking first and foremost, I'm very excited to see you fight Corey come March 16. I think it's going to be a great fight, you, Jackie Amorim, prospect versus prospect. Hopefully, you keep the momentum going. And I want to thank you so much for your time. Just, you know, being able to sit here, speak with you. You know, I look forward to watching your next fight. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Corin McKenna on social media. I'll be linking her socials in the description down below. Do be sure to check her fight out against Jackie Amarim at March 16th at UFC Fight Night. It's going to be a great bout. You know, it's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Have a great day, guys.